الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this insan, this human being for an object. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ اَيْ لِيَعْرِفُونَ Allah Jalla Jalalu has created us only for His worship. We have been sent in this world, we have not come. To do what? To recognize who this Allah is. Ayat upon ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has introduced himself, Allahu la ilaha illa hu. Explaining different things in the Quran, ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ I have done this, I have done this, this is Allah. وَإِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ One unique Allah. وَهُوَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ إِلَهُ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَهُ the one, if you look up in the heavens, it is Allah who is Ilah. If you look on the earth, it is Allah who is Ilah on the earth. Ambiya alayhi salatu was salam came and gave the same dawah. Ma min ilahin ghayruh. If you have to turn, if you have to give attention, if you have to worship, then worship one Allah. Ghayruh. Take out ghayr out of your hearts. We need to turn to Allah. We have to give our attention to Allah. We have to have tawakkul and trust in Allah. We have to have yaqeen in Allah. مَا نَزَلَ فِي الْأَرْضِ شَيْءٌ أَقَلَّ مِنَ الْيَقِينِ If every, anything was ever sent down on the earth, it was short in number, in small quantities, minimum, limited edition, then it is yaqeen in the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Abu Nu'aym in his ilya is mentioned. Riwayu ta'allamu al-yaqeen kama ta'allamu al-Qur'an. Oh my ummah, learn this yaqeen like how you learn Qur'an. You need to learn this yaqeen hatta ta'rifu. Speak so much about Allah. Negate the creation. Give all your time and energy to this Allah in any situation, in any problem, in any adversity, in any condition. Your heart should go to this Allah. Hatta ta'rifu. Make so much effort on this Allah that this heart recognizes who the, this Allah is. Inna nasa lam yu'taw fi hadhi dunya khayrun min al yaqeen. That this uh, Ummah has not been given anything more better and more beneficial than Yaqeen. It is a statement in Maqula of our Mashayikh, Kafa bil mawti wa'idhan. That death is a sufficient wise and lesson. Wa kafa bil Yaqeen ghinan. That it is sufficient to call a person wealthy who has this Yaqeen. A person who has yaqeen does not need anything else on earth. He's got all the treasures. He's got all the wealth on earth. وَكَفَى بِالْعِبَادَةِ شُغْلَى And it is sufficient for a person to suffice and to be busy in ibadat. We don't need any other entertainment. We don't need any other enjoyment except ibadah. And turning our attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulama explained the word Allah comes from the Aliha Ya'lahu. Aliha. And what does it mean? لِأَنَّهُ مَأْلُوهُنْ اَيْ مَعْبُودٌ Because this insan, this human being, who does he give his attention to? Who does he worship? That is Ilah. لِأَنَّ الْعُقُولِ تَعْلَهُ فِي عَظْمَتِهِ Because this insan, his perception, his mind turns towards the greatness of this being. He is stunned, he is bewildered by the greatness of Allah that his heart does not turn to anything else besides Allah. الَّذِي يَيْأَسْ مِنْ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ 
that a person who loses hope from everything besides Allah, لا يميل خلبه إلى أحدين. His heart does not go to anyone else. كتفلي إلى أمه. Like how a small child turns its attention to a mother in all conditions, in all circumstances, when the child cries, it knows that my mother will solve all my problems, all my issues. Currently, today, we need this yaqeen. If there was ever greater need and a greater time that mankind needed was now to turn our hearts to Allah in all conditions, in all situations. And like Imam Ghazali explains, like a dead corpse, the person, the coroner who's washing the dead body, how the dead body turns, how he wants to turn it, the body accepts the movements. There's no objection, there's no resistance. Like that, all conditions, all situations, all halat are from Allah. And I need to wa ufawidu amri ila Allah. I need to hand my matter over to Allah. I need to speak to Allah. And another example he gives, kal wakil. When somebody has a problem, then he goes to a lawyer because it's a matter of the courts. So he employs the best lawyer to make sure the lawyer will solve his issues. Likewise, he explains whatever problem is this earth, is this world, is the court of Allah. We need to hand over our problems to Allah. Now, when you gave the file, when you gave the docket, when you gave the inquiry to the lawyer, then it is his job and responsibility to solve the problem. You don't need to stress how you're going to fight in court, what you're going to tell the judge, how you're going to interrogate the witnesses. No, that's the job of the lawyer. Walillahi al ala I need to think how I'm going to give all these problems of dunya and hand it over to my Allah. But before one can have and turn to Allah, for there are a few sifat and qualities. Number one is any item, anything for its value to manifest, we have to see if it's genuine or fake. So, for example, a diamond, somebody gives you a stone, genuine or fake, you need to check it. Likewise, do we believe that Allah is our genuine Allah? Is He the one that's going to solve my problems or not? That's why man has created fake gods, fake Allah. We as the Ummah of Janab Rasulullah are fortunate. We have a genuine Allah. Number two, quality. So, for example, somebody gives you a stone, you verify it is genuine. Now you need to see the quality. In this diamond, normally in a diamond they call it the four C's. You see whether the color is good, you see whether the clarity is good, you see whether the carrots, what's the weight of it, and the cuts. These qualities makes it valuable. One, one sifat of Allah is sufficient. One, one quality of Allah. Walillahi al-asma'ul husna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many names. Ulama explain for our comprehension, for our understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned 99 sifat. One sifat on its own is an ocean on its own. Number three, rarity. How rare is this thing, for example, a diamond, it is genuine, it has all the qualities. 
but is it rare or not? So based on the rarity, does the value increase? So you'll get an industrial diamond, then you get a real diamond, and it has got all the qualities as mentioned, but it's a colored diamond, it's a rare pink diamond. Now this diamond compared to other diamonds makes it more valuable. Makes it more valuable. Number four, demand. So it's genuine, it has all the qualities, it is very rare, but supply and demand. So you've got a nice, genuine pink diamond. That diamond, for example, now currently in the world, in the situation with the virus, many people have a lot of assets, but there's nobody to take it. There's no demand, so it loses its value. And the last number five is that the holder of the diamond should know its value. If he doesn't know the value of the diamond, then the diamond loses its value completely. So Allah is genuine. Allah's qualities are 100% real. Allah is rare. There's only one Allah. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid. Walam yulad. Walam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. There's no one like Allah. The demand of Allah is great because there's no greater need, there's no greater zarurat and necessity on earth, more than the need for Allah in our hearts. And number five is the holder should know its value. If a person meets all four criteria but he doesn't know what he is, then it is useless. And I'll conclude on one incident where a farmer had dug in his orchard, he found a box, he found some stones inside, he was quite elated. After his elation, he decided, hey, this is very interesting, I can tell the crows, I can give it to my kids as a toy to play with, etc. So he distributed it, he pelted the crows, his children's play, children, kids played with it. One day his friend from the city came to visit him. When he visited him, he noticed that the kids were playing with a very shiny stone. So he told his friend that, where did you get this? He told him the whole story. So he said, why don't you go to the city and evaluate it? So he was going one day to the city, so he had one stone. He took it to a jeweler. He went into the shop and he showed the jeweler a stone and said, value this for me. The jeweler looked at the stone, then looked at the Bedouin, the farmer. It was amazing. He said, I'll give you a hundred thousand. The Bedouin started crying. The jeweler got worried. Maybe I, I put a low value to it. Maybe, maybe I haven't given him the accurate value. Maybe he knows the value of the stone. He said, okay, I'll give you a hundred and fifty thousand. He started crying more. He said, this, this farmer knows the value of the stone, I cannot do this to him. He said, okay, last 300,000 I'll give you. As the farmer heard that he fell unconscious, the jeweler stressed, tried to revive him. After he regained consciousness, he said to him, I offered you 100,000, you cried, then 150,000, you cried more, and then you fell unconscious. If you want more, I'll give you more. The jeweler looking at his izzat and honor also, and people who are outside watching said, I can't give him a low value. So he was worried about his honor as well. And he wanted the stone because he knew the value. You get him something valuable for almost nothing. The bad one said, I never cried and fell unconscious because of the value. I cried because I had an entire box full of these stones. If I had them all, I would have been set. The shiakin is a very rare commodity. Trust in Allah is a very rare commodity. Each of these stones in, the, in our spirit, when we see the benefits, it should not be that we cry like this Bedouin. May Allah SWT give us tawfiq of turning to him in all conditions.